In terms of the task ahead, uh, we will continue pursuing the search um, with much vigour. Uh, I have to say, in my experience, uh, and I have got uh, a lot of experience in search and rescue over the, uh, over the years, this search and recovery uh, operation is probably the most challenging one I have ever seen. And I say that because uh, the starting point whenever you do a search and rescue is the last known position uh, of the, uh, the vehicle or the aircraft. In this particular case, uh, the last known position was a long, long way uh, from where the aircraft appears to have gone. Uh, and uh, I, I guess our expectation is that it's, uh, it's crashed into the southern uh, ocean. So having a, a good datum from which to mount the search is very challenging. Uh, we have the best experts in the world helping the Australian Maritime Safety uh, agency decide where the, uh, the best area to search is. But I have to say, uh, it's very complex, it's very demanding, uh, and we don't have hard information like we might normally have. Uh, by way of uh, comparison, if we look at the Air France disaster and the Atlantic Ocean um, some years ago, that aircraft was flying a, uh, a well-travelled route between South America and Europe. Uh, so when the aircraft were, was uh, unaccounted for, uh, the first thing was to go and search that air route in the vicinity of where the last radio calls were made. And of course, within 24 hours, debris was uh, found on the surface of the ocean in two locations. Two locations that were many kilometres apart, I might add. That provided a, a good starting point for the high technology work that followed uh, to find uh, passengers and also to find the black boxes. And I might no note that it took two years to find the black boxes. So what we really need now is to find uh, debris wreckage from uh, the aircraft and that will, uh, that will change the whole nature of our search because we'll then be able to employ high technology uh, to assist us to do the underwater part of the, uh, of the search. This could drag on for a long time, uh, but I think at this stage it's very important to uh, pursue the, the leads, I'll call them leads, the evidence that has been presented to us. Um, I think they give us a, um, a starting point. Uh, it's not the usual sort of starting point that we have, but we have a starting point and we need to pursue the search with vigour and we should continue to do that for some time to come. But inevitably, uh, I think if we don't find wreckage on the surface, um, we are eventually going to have to uh, uh, probably in consultation with everybody who has a stake in this, um, review of what we do next. Um, one of the things that I'm always struck by was here in Australia we had one of our warships, HMAS Sydney, go down in World War II. There were eyewitnesses who, uh, who saw the ship disappear over the horizon. But it took us um, uh, about 60 years uh, to find HMAS Sydney on the bottom of the, uh, the ocean. Now, we've got much better technology now, uh, and that wouldn't happen in this day and age, uh, but we are working from uh, uh, a, very, um, a very uncertain uh, starting point. And I just wanted to reinforce that because it will take time. Uh, it's not something that's necessarily going to uh, be resolved uh, in the next two weeks, for example.